I know I'm late, y'all. I know I'm late. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, of course, y'all know I'm going to be looking back and forth in the screens because I'm on like three different screens recording. But that's okay. Um, I told y'all I was coming back last night to record, but God stopped me in my tracks because he wanted me to um, talk about something else. So, y'all come on in. I'm here. I'm late, but I'm here. It's like 9 o'clock p.m. I'm record exactly what God told me to record. But first, before I start talking about what God told me to talk about, I wanted to, I ran into somebody today while I was out. His name is E.G. White. This is his book that he gave me. He is a very anointed man of God. The name of this book is The, the, the Desire of Ages. Y'all yeah, cop this book. Cop this book. I haven't had time to delve all the way into it, but just talking to him, yeah, he got some knowledge. God has been dropping some stuff down in him. And this is his second book, um, The Great Controversy. Y'all cop that too. The Great Controversy. Okay, so I'm going to make this quick. I'm going to make this live as quick as I possibly can. Um, if y'all can do me a favor, share this live. Share this live. Um, tell your folks Keisha on. Keisha is on. Keisha is live and she is here to call some stuff out. Okay. So the um what God told me to talk about tonight was the high cost of telling the truth. There is a cost to telling the truth. If y'all believe, if y'all know what I'm saying is true, just hit like for me. Go ahead and hit like. There is a cost to telling the truth. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing started. Um, let's see. Y'all give me one second. Okay, I know somebody um told me that they wanted to come on, and again, I'm late coming on, so I just tagged her so that she can come on in. And All right, here we go. And again, I record on three different platforms because um, there are some government officials in the city, state, Birmingham, Alabama, Jefferson County, who just does not like Keisha. So they do everything they can to get my posts and my lies removed. Thank y'all for hitting like. Y'all come on in, share, and let your folks know I'm on. Everybody know I be talking, but I don't be talking crazy. I be telling the truth, okay? And when you tell the truth, there is a high cost to telling the truth. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get started to what God has told me to write. Let's look at one of the last prophets of the Old Testament. It's it, Y'all, I'm a teacher. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I am a teacher. So when God tell me to do something, I have to do it and make it plain and simple so even a baby can understand it, okay? So let's look at one of the last prophets of the old of the New Testament, John the Baptist. He broke into the scene in Judea, challenging the power and structure of religious leaders, paving the way for truth. And the truth is, Jesus Christ, amen. John was set apart for a special purpose in the kingdom of God. John preached and he taught with boldness and he called people out on their sins. <coughs> y'all excuse me, y'all know I was just getting over um, over restore too. But John, he, he, he was bold enough. He didn't cover up the lies of the system. He didn't cover up the corruption of the system. He called you out on your stuff. And we all know people who like that who gets pissed off if you call them out on their stuff. 
Amen. So what I mean by the high cost, there is a high cost because people are coming after you if you tell the truth on them. Especially if they have a high, they serve and have a high position. Amen. John preached and he taught with a boldness. He called people out on their sins and their wickedness. He called people out and he told them to repent, be baptized, and turn back to God. Amen. Some people listened and some others hardened their hearts and were filled with pride and arrogance. John was not the one to remain silent about evil, about injustice, about people being mistreated. He spoke up about it. Amen. When King Herod married Herodias, Herodias was his brother's wife. <laughs> Is that right? Hell no, it's not right. And yes, I say hell a, a lot. Hey, it is what it is. I say hell a lot. But John did not stay silent about um, what they were doing. And, and we look at the families today. It happens so much. Where, because uncle is a pastor, it's okay for him to molest Nene and TT now. And everybody shut up about it. Because pastor can't lose his reputation? What kind of foolishness is that? So many people sit around and they watch little children get hurt. Because the person who's doing the hurt is pastor in them. A police officer in them. A judge, an attorney in them. Just because they hold a position that mean they can get away with it? Absolutely not. God sees how he looks low. He sees everything. And it's only a it's only a matter of time. Everything has a time stamp on it. Everything has a time stamp on it. Amen. Um, and like I said, I'm teaching right now, but I'm 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 about to get into some stuff and start God told me to expose. So yeah, I'm gonna call some names out. I don't care about people getting mad. I, I don't care at all. So, um, again, John did not stay silent like many of us do because many of us fear man and not God. The only reason a person will not speak out about somebody being hurt is because they fear man. Everybody who's afraid to speak out, I'm telling you now, you're a punk. You are a coward and you will not be accepted into heaven. Cowards do not go to heaven. I'm sorry. It's in the Bible. Read your Bible. Amen. Instead, John pointed out Herod's neglect and his disobedience to God's laws. How many of y'all know that when people have titles, that's what I was just saying, such as kings, mayor, judge, police officer, pastor, governor, etc., they don't like it when people tell the truth about them. They don't like it when people call them out on their stuff. Forgetting that they're human and everybody SHI stinks. Everybody's stuff stinks. These people do not like when you call them out on their lies, their corruptions, their lawlessness, their adultery. <laughs> Most of them are adulterers. They get mad when you tell the truth about them. These people feel as if they have all the power in the world and that they can get away with anything they want to get away with. Herod became so mad at John that he had him killed. He had John's head severed and handed to him on a plate. You have to be a madman to get that angry at somebody for uncovering the truth that you take their life that's your self-gratification to take somebody's life. <laughs> See, what Herod did not realize was that just because you silenced the messenger, you still did not silence the message. John, just like Jesus and every true prophet of God, they are a whistleblower. This, 
I know y'all prophets and y'all pastors be lying to y'all, telling y'all that this is the season of the bride. This is the season of increase. They lying. This is the season of the whistleblower because God is drawing his people back to him. God is drawing his people into repentance because when God, <laughs> when God takes over, y'all don't want God to come back and take over and you are not repentant. Because he's going to destroy everything that does not look like him. Okay? What is a whistleblower? A whistleblower is a person who reveals activity and information about a person or an organization that is deemed illegal, immoral, illicit, unsafe, and fraudulent. Whistleblowers are targeted individuals. Whistleblowers are victims of being stalked, of being harassed, of being falsely accused, of being jailed. <laughs> That's what they do. Again, when you when you tell the truth on them, these people have no limit to what they would do to get you, okay? Um, they will try to make these people who are truth tellers. Who are the whistleblowers? Who are the true prophets and servants of God? They will try to make these people look crazy. Like they lost all their marbles. They're out of their mind. Trust me when I say this, y'all. We are not out of our minds. We are not. Um, they will even try to make these people look like criminals. <laughs> Let's look at one of the last true prophets of our generation. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they tried to slander this man's name. They tried to ruin his reputation. They tried to make him a criminal. They didn't try to kill him. They did kill him. Because he spoke out against injustices. He continued to tell the truth until the day that he died. He continued to speak out about the unjust justice systems he continued to tell about the illegal activities that were going on he talked about the abuse of the government their titles and their power this is the cost of telling the truth they gonna kill you <laughs> ask me how I know they tried to kill me but God won't let it happen <laughs> One thing about a true prophet of God, they always have followers. They always have followers. And when you have followers, they will do anything that they have to do to steal your influence. That's when all the lies start. That's when all the um, false reports and false accusations start. And we all know who's the father of accusations. The accuser himself, Satan. Amen. So if you were, and, I, and the reason I said this is because if anybody was to go to my old um, Facebook page, my old um, Instagram, my old, what do you call it, Twitter, and all my old social media platforms, I had a very large following, and they hated it. They did everything they could, just like they did John just like they did Jesus, just like they did Dr. King. <laughs> and Dr. King was, I went, I, I'm telling y'all, I, I was locked up in that same jail as Dr. King for telling the truth. <laughs> the city and state of Birmingham, Alabama, here we go, Jefferson County, they did everything that they could to shut my mouth. And they tried to steal my influence. They shut down. <laughs> They reported, and they had all my platforms blocked and removed. Every single week, I was in Facebook jail. I was literally the queen of Facebook jail because <laughs> they kept having me blocked. These people in the government, in the system, they told lies. They slandered my name. They tried ruining my reputation. They even locked me up. <laughs> they called me crazy. They even tried to have me killed several times even paid this is how low they go 
They even paid my sister, my blood sister, my Judas, to steal my baby and give my baby to my child's father, who was a big time drug dealer in Birmingham, Alabama. This man had the DEA watching him. Now all of a sudden, he's fit to raise a child because someone who has a um, position in government don't like me. <clears throat> this is how wicked the government is. If you don't bow down to them, and as y'all can see, the world we are living in, the systems and governments are trying to take over. And if you do not bow down to them, they coming after you. You better know how to fight. You better know how to put on your war clothes. You better know how to work them fruits of the spirit. Y'all better know how to put on that armor of God. Because they coming after you with all they got. I'm telling y'all. John the Baptist, just in case y'all didn't know what John I was talking about, I'm talking about John the Baptizer. He was a straight shooter, and so am I. John didn't consider the what ifs. What if? I don't consider the what ifs. I just say it, and they don't like it. I trust and I obey God. We have no other choice but to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But if we look at our wicked leaders, they don't tell the truth. Instead, they hide it. They will kill you to hide the truth. They will send people to your home to set it on fire <laughs> if you tell the truth. Because they don't want their lies exposed. When you are a truth teller, when you are a whistleblower, a prophet of God, trust me <laughs> when I say, they coming after you. All of this stuff, serving God, working for God, it comes at a high cost. These people, again, they, they paid my blood sister, Jamie Daniel. Jamie Daniel of Birmingham, Alabama. They paid her $5,000 $5, to steal my baby. They lied on me. They said I abandoned my baby. I left her in Georgia for five hours. They said all of a sudden I went crazy. All of a sudden I went crazy and lost my mind. We all know that's a lie. We all know that's a lie. But they say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over, right? Expecting different results, right? I'm going to tell y'all who's the insane one. Who's the one that needs to be locked up? Jamie Daniel. The one who just stole thousands of dollars from your job when you was working at Alethea House. Signing false leases. Getting that PPP money. Jamie Daniel, was that not you? Calling all your friends. Asking them for their leases. Because I remember you calling me asking for my lease when you were homeless. I gave you the keys to my apartment. I gave you all the furniture in my apartment. I paid your car note. I helped you pay your bills. I helped you feed your son, Jamie Daniel. And this is how you pay me back. That's jealousy. Jealousy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's insane, Jamie Daniel. Keep going back to your baby daddy. Who ran you over with his car, broke your leg, broke your arm, did it in front of your son, and then had you locked up. That's insane to keep going back to him. After he told you you were not woman enough for him. So he made you sleep on the floor of his living room while he had other women in there sleeping with them. Didn't he get engaged? Didn't he get married? But you kept running back to him. That's what insane is. Okay, this man sent you to work with several black eyes, several broken nose, pistol whipped you several times. That's insane. I'm far from insane. I'm far from crazy. But again, when you go against the government, when you speak the truth, 
against the government. They are coming after you. <laughs> this man left you in the streets homeless with your child. And you kept going back to him. But people will do anything for money. They will do anything for money. I'm telling y'all. People will do anything for money. If you think I'm lying, ask my godmama, Deborah Davis. Debbie Watts, Deborah Lincoln Watts, Deborah Davis of Fairfield, Alabama. Ask her. She was my biggest cheerleader. My biggest cheerleader. Until the minister whore, Kenosha Laster of Birmingham, Alabama, who works at Birmingham Municipal Court, who's sleeping with presiding judge Andre Sparks, called her, my godmama now, called her and told her that I want her husband. We know that's a lie. I don't like cockeyed men. I can't tell whenever he's lying or telling the truth. So what, what am I doing dating you? I don't have a reason to date you. You cockeyed. <laughs> Deborah Davis, again, what people would do for money. Why would I want your husband when you don't even want your husband? Were you not at your own wedding? Talking about how you want to sleep with your daughter's husband's father? And you're a Christian. Deborah Davis, did you not say that you wanted to sleep with Pastor Doug Taylor? Deborah Davis, you're such a Christian. Did you tell your sister Brenda Williams that you wanted to pay me money to beat her up and how you dog your nieces out, her children, her daughters? You're a Christian, but you'll do anything for money, right, Deborah Davis? <laughs> Y'all. Y'all, <laughs> when I tell y'all, people do anything for money. So all of a sudden, that you have all these government officials. You have Governor Gay Ivy. I'm sorry, K Ivy, who doesn't like me. <coughs> you have the gay mayor Randall Wolfen, who doesn't like me. You have the whoremongering presiding judge, who doesn't like me. You have the police chief, Thurman, whoever, whatever his name is. You have um, Al Anger over Eternal Affairs, who don't like me. So what do y'all think is going to happen? All these people going to team up against me. Because, you know, for every one prophet, there's 850 false prophets who worship Baal, who bow down to Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab would be presiding judge Andre Spots. Jezebel would be his whoremongering assistant, Kenosha Lasseter, that he sleeps with all the time. <laughs> anyway, I wasn't crazy when all these people needed my help. I wasn't crazy, Deborah Davis, when you used to sit around and dog out the minister whore, Kenosha Lasseter, but now you're suddenly friends with her. Now you're suddenly friends with her. Did you tell your niece, Kwanda? I, I think she's SD hair on Facebook. How you don't like her and her sister? Did you tell Jennifer, your other sister? How you said her, her, her daughter so fast that she have sex at church? Ain't that what you said she lost her virginity at? Deborah Davis. Did, did you tell Jennifer that you talk about her two gay sons? Deborah Davis. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> but y'all, I promise y'all that's another story. You can buy it in the books too. All of this is in the books. <laughs> All of that is in the book. Deborah, you said you 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 heard all the phone conversations. You knew every time these people was coming to vandalize my car. You knew when they were sending police officers to my home to threaten me and my child. And you played as if you didn't know. They tried to set the house on fire with me and my baby. And they paid to have my car vandalized. They paid someone to set the house on fire with me and my child inside. And you didn't even open your mouth. You're a coward. You won't be getting into heaven. Trust me when I say that. <laughs> anyway, 
I'm going to get back to talking about the whistleblowers. But Deborah Davis, I want you to know that there is a target on your back from the heavens. I don't have to touch y'all. I don't have to play get back or clap back with y'all because God fights for me. I'm telling you, God fights for me. Jamie Daniel, as I prophesied to you before, when I heard in the spirit, God said, you're going to lose your firstborn. That is your only child. God said he warned you several times to retract what you did. And... <clears throat> They, um, of course, I told y'all they always block my live, so they just blocked it on, <coughs> on TikTok, but that's okay. Like I said, they always blocking me, so that's why I record from several, several, um, different platforms at one time. Anyway, so it's just Facebook and TikTok. That's cool. Um, Jamie, like I said, God said that your firstborn is going to die. He is, and he's going to leave you to mourn his death on earth until you die. You're going to live a very unhappy life. You're already unhappy. But And one thing we can know, we know for sure that we can believe and trust God to do. He's going to avenge his prophets. Amen. There is no fame. There is no future. There is no fortune. <laughs> and telling the truth you know this life only comes with having your life destroyed by those who wish to hide the truth that's the only thing that comes with being a true prophet of God we don't get our reward until we get in heaven <coughs> it is what it is as believers good Samaritans are we not obligated to warn others against possible harm if you have an accurate, true knowledge, first-hand information about a situation that could result in harm, are we not God's mandate reporters? If we say that we're believers, if we say that we're Christians, why aren't y'all reporting these things? Why are y'all going along with the lies? Because again, you don't fear God, you fear man. And it shows. It shows. Every time I made a report, my attorney, Rakia McAdory, knew about it. This lady called me and told me to get my baby and get the hell out of Birmingham. <coughs> she knew that they wanted me dead. She used to work for Andre Sparks. So what am I saying? She, she fears him. She fears what he can do to her. She fears what he can do to her job. She does not trust God. She is not a true Christian. She's not a, a real servant of God, you know? You know that these people are trying to kill me. You're an attorney, and not once did you report it. Not once did you call the FBI because your job is more important than doing what's right. And you call yourself a Christian. Carl Pierce, I think he said he was on the legislation. He was also my attorney. This man backed down to Katrina Ross, Judge Katrina Ross. <laughs> she, that's an evil, I'm telling y'all now, Judge Katrina Ross is a evil witch. Um, <clears throat> When she saw me in court, she told Gajar Apartment to stay away from me. Two days later, Gajar Apartment showed up to where I was with a group of women, five women, to jump on me. Now, these women were supposed to be in jail. They were out of jurisdiction, first of all. They had um, unlicensed guns. And they even threatened me in front of the police to gun me down but they were not arrested. When I went to go file um, a warrant, <clears throat> they told me I can't get one because when the women targeted me, when they came after me to hit me, I maced them. So they said I assaulted these women who came to where I were 
to jump on me. That's how the system works. Ain't that right, Magistrate Arthur Patton Teal? You're the one who authorized this behavior. Yep. And if and I'm sure everyone has heard the recording already. Um, has Takia Lawson McCants on the recording. Now, Takia Lawson McCants is a state um, social worker. So she's a mandated reporter. You can hear her on the phone call saying that she knew that they were coming to do harm to me and my child, but she did not report it. Benton Carter is a police uh, um, Alabama state trooper. You knew of these women coming to do harm to me and my child because you were there. Remember? You were there when they came to jump on me. You were on the phone conversation when they said they were going to come, um, when they came to vandalize my car and um, tried to set the home on fire. You were there, Benton Carter, and you're A-L-E-A. <laughs> Mandated reporters. But when Kenosha Lassiter, the minister whore, called and threatened to take your job, what did you do? You bagged down and you bagged out to kill Lawson McCants. What did you do when Kenosha Lassiter called and threatened you? You bagged down and you bagged out. You're supposed to be big and bad, but you bagged down to Kenosha. Y'all weak, y'all cowards, and y'all will not be getting to heaven. Trust me when I say that. And, and the only reason Kenosha is getting away with so much, again, is because she operates as Ahab's. That's, that's again, Ahab, we all know that that is presiding judge, pastor, Andre Sparks. And Kenosha is his Jezebel. That's who he's screwing. Um, This girl... I, and I have all I have a lot of conversations recorded of her calling people, trying to pay them to kill me, but no one has done anything about it. DA Danny Carr, you you you'll let her come down there and file stuff on me, but I can't file anything on her. And you have the recorded conversation from a sheriff saying that this girl called him and told him he better not say nothing or she was gonna take his job. A sheriff. This girl got the sheriff. This girl got freaking state troopers backing down to her because she's screwing the presiding judge. He's giving her all this power on earth and he's going to hell for everything that he's trying to cover. <clears throat> Jamie Daniel, did you not call me and say that Kenosha called you? So you, you backing down to Kenosha too, Jamie Daniel? You're supposed to be big and bad. You're supposed to have all these people scared of you, Jamie Daniel. Because you called me and said, you're going to get your gun and you're going to shoot Kenosha. You're going to kill that B-I-T-C-H. But yet you back down. You sold my baby. Girl, you're going to die. You and your son are going to die real soon. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be praying for him. Because the things that he is about to reap. It's because you sold it, Jamie. It's because you did this to your son, Jamie. <laughs> <clears throat> Y'all would rather commit crimes for a whoremonger <laughs> than to stand up and tell the truth. Y'all would rather commit crimes than to stand and tell the truth. And that's sad. It says a lot about y'all integrity. It says a lot about who you serve, too. Y'all doing all these crimes as if God is blind to it. God ain't blind. God sees all. He hears all. He knows all. He even know your thoughts. He even know what you're thinking now while you're watching this video. God knows. <laughs> he knows that y'all pissed at me, but it's okay. Because, again, I stand and I tell the truth. Amen. <clears throat> truth telling and whistleblowing. It's a gift from God, whether y'all know it or not. Let's look at Jesus. He was arrested on made-up charges. Guess who else was arrested on made-up charges? Me. Dr. Martin Luther King. John the Baptist, Apostle Paul, and many other prophets were arrested on false charges. 
because people are so wicked in the judicial, municipal system, the legislation, the government, and the systems of the world. But they allow the people who are actually guilty to walk away with their crimes if they bow down to them. I don't bow down. I'm not bowing down. Never. Never will I ever bow down. Okay? All prophets can relate to Jesus. We've endured the persecution. We've endured the injustice and the unfair process, even being jailed. When Jesus was on trial, Pilate knew that there was no reason not to release Jesus. In Acts 16, we see that Apostle Paul went to jail with Silas. Peter went to jail and was released. So was I. On the day that I was supposed to go to trial, DA Danny Carr said that they did not have a case and to let me go. I didn't have to go to trial. Let me go. They held me for the time that they held me in fear of Andre Sparks. They didn't have a case. All these false made up charges, they held me. But when it was time to go to trial, y'all know when we go to trial, all the truth has to come out. They didn't want to do trial. They did not want to do trial, so they let me go. <laughs> they had no case. Them false charges that they put on me, they couldn't stick. Again, they pretty much held me, like my attorney said, because they didn't like me and to shut my mouth. Yep. They did it. The first thing was so crazy. The first thing my attorney asked me, he said, it's Kenosha sleeping with your baby daddy because she has a big interest in your relationship with your baby daddy. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And I told him. She may have slept with him. Just like she slept with everything else in the system. I'm sure. Just like she did Benton Carter. Deborah Davis. Jamie Daniel. To kill Lawson McCants. She's done it to everybody else. She, she threatens them. That she's going to go public with them the different men she slept with she threatened them andre sparks i'm sure she's threatened you the reason you let allow her to get away with so many crimes again this lady this woman this boy whatever she is jazabelle tried to hit my attorney rakia mcadory with her car in front of the municipal court building mcadory was so scared that she left the case and told me to get my stuff and get out of Birmingham. She was so afraid of Kenosha and Andre Sparks that she left my case and told me to leave. <sighs> this girl, Kenosha, she done slept with just about everything in the municipal system, in the judicial system, um, freaking Birmingham Police Department, Jefferson County, she, and she wrote a book about when she slept with one of the commissioners of Jefferson County. She um, she even filed some stuff with the EEOC. But they laughed at her because you can't file <clears throat> with the EEOC. Talking about somebody sexually harassing you when the sex that you had with them was consensual. <laughs> the EEOC ain't going to give you no money for having consensual sex. With nobody, ma'am. Yeah, my phone finna go dead. So that's why I had to charge it and hold the phone. But um, I told, I promised y'all I was gonna do this live. So I'm, I'm gonna do this live. I'm just gonna have to hold the phone and finish it out. Um, again, back to Jesus. Back to Jesus. Back to Jesus. Again, Pilate had nothing on Jesus, but the religious folks, quote unquote, the pastors, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they name fit them perfect because they said, you see, Sadducees. <laughs> That's why these people are so miserable. 
the government, the judges, the lawyers, law enforcement, these religious people, they pressed really hard for Jesus' crucifixion because Jesus told the truth. Because Jesus told the truth. It was not the secular people. Mm -mm. It wasn't the unbelievers. These were the church people who wanted Jesus dead. These are the church people who wanted Keisha dead. These are church people, y'all. The minister whore. She calls herself a prophetess. Andre Sparks is a pastor. Arthur Pantil calls himself a minister. These are men and women who are playing to love God. Because they don't love God. Mm -mm. They don't love God. Um, again, the religious people had a vendetta against Jesus. They were mad at Jesus because he told the truth. He told them about themselves. He told them of the, the wicked things they were doing. He called them out on their lies. He called them out on their corruption. And he did not kiss their butts. How many times have I kissed somebody's butt? Never. How many times do I plan on kissing somebody's butt? Never. I would not conform. Jesus didn't conform. Paul didn't conform. John didn't conform. Instead, they continued to speak the truth, no matter what it was. And I will continue to speak the truth when Jesus tell me to. <coughs> um, they tell me all the time that I can't say what I say to people who hold positions. I remember um, when the presiding judge, Andre Sparks, told me, that I can't talk to him the way I talk to him because he's a judge. Sir, that's just a title. You carry yourself just like any person in the world. You're wicked, you're corrupt, and God is going to destroy you. Sooner than you expect, God is going to destroy you. You're a liar, you're a whoremonger, you're adulterous, you're greedy. You're full of pride, and you're one donut away from a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> That's who you are, sir. That's why I don't respect you, because you're corrupt, Ahab. You're corrupt. You're a demon. That's why you operate like you operate. That's why you hurt innocent people, because you're wicked. Pastor Judge Andre Sparks. Just like Jesus, I see right through y'all, and y'all, <laughs> y'all really think y'all be fooling somebody. Y'all don't have these people fooled in the city of Birmingham, Jefferson County. I hope you know that. Y'all don't have them fooled. Y'all have them in fear. That's the difference. They know who y'all are. They know what y'all are doing, but they're afraid. <laughs> they don't trust God. They're afraid. Jesus called a spade a spade. Keisha calls a spade a spade. Andre Sparks, you're a fraud. <laughs> you're a liar. You're corrupt, man. That's who you are. <clears throat> Jesus walked in power. And because he walked in power and he did not bow down to them, he had them shook. Because Keisha walks in power and Keisha does not bow down to them, it has them shook. When y'all have to come together, y'all literally pull half the state of Alabama <clears throat> to come up against me. People who didn't even know me were coming up against me. Because they're in fear of what Andre Sparks is going to do to them. Like I told y'all before, there were some people who God said he sent to aid me. And y'all 
refused to because y'all were afraid of Andre Sparks. I even had one attorney to tell me <clears throat> he can't get involved because Andre Sparks already told him not to. I even had one attorney, female, who took on my case. She went and she filed a paperwork to get Andre Sparks removed from the bench. This was on a Thursday. Sunday, <clears throat> she called me and said that she couldn't do it because Andre has threatened to take her job. Anyone who works for legal aid, anyone who was court appointed in the city of Birmingham, anyone who was black in the city of Birmingham can't take my case because they're afraid of Andre Sparks. Y'all will not be getting into heaven. It just is what it is. Jesus, God, don't do no cowards. Y'all are cowards. <clears throat> Instead of y'all doing what's right, y'all bowing down to this fat man? Really? What he gonna do, chase after you? <laughs> he can't run, he too fat to run. But y'all bowing down to this man. Y'all yeah, punks. See, one thing I know for sure. The devil ain't scared of y'all. He ain't intimidated by y'all. And he ain't bothering y'all. Because y'all don't have power. Instead of him bothering y'all, he would rather employ y'all. Y'all work for Satan. Anything that goes against Christ, anything that goes against God is the Antichrist. And you're working for Satan. <clears throat> Judas. Or should I say Jamie Daniel. My sister. Judas. Deborah Davis. Remember what Judas did. He set Jesus up right. Jamie Daniel and Deborah Davis. What did y'all do? Y'all set me up. Jamie you sold my child. For $5,000. Deborah Davis, you sold my child for five thousand dollars. Judas sold Jesus out for what thirty cent? Thirty cent. Just as Jesus, I told the kings, Andre Sparks, um, what's that gay lady name? Kay Ivy. I told her I was set up. They knew I was set up because they all had something to do with it. <clears throat> They all had something to do with it. When you file a false police report, what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to lock you up. Jamie Daniel went to the police station and said that I went crazy and left my baby in Georgia. Georgia police said if a baby was sent in Villa Rica, Georgia for four hours alone in a Dairy Queen, they would have known about it. CPS, defects, everybody would have known about it. Hell, even the man at the owner, the manager at Dairy Queen would have known about it. He pulled the tapes. We never even went into Dairy Queen. <laughs> Jamie told my attorney. Um, Rakia McAdory that the police Birmingham police came to her job and told her that she better turn my baby in or she going to jail I have that I, I still have that recording Bur Birmingham said they never went to um, Jamie's job so because y'all don't like me Y'all allow Jamie to lie on the police and get away with it. This is how corruption works, y'all. They all work together. They all team up and work together. They all have to cover each other's lies. So they let it they just let it fly by night. They don't even try to investigate. They just let whatever they say sit there. Because if they investigate again, Danny Carr. If you go to trial, then all the truth comes out. And y'all don't want the truth to come out. But one thing's for sure and two things for certain. The word of God cannot return void. 
God told y'all in the book of Luke, Luke 12, everything that's done in the dark will be revealed in the light. Everything y'all thought y'all were whispering, it's going to be heard. And God going to make sure that it's going to be heard around the world when he brings y'all down. When God said that Birmingham, Alabama, Jefferson County is under siege, he meant that. Y'all better stop and look around and see what's going on in Birmingham, Jefferson County. I ain't lied about nothing. Everything that I said has come to pass, and it's still coming to pass. Again, crime. look at the crime. Y'all can't even keep up with how many people are dying. Look at all the fires that are breaking out. <laughs> Look at all the accidents that are happening. That's because the church leaders, the pastors, the watchmen have allowed these spirits of darkness to control what they are supposed to be controlling. Ain't no way in hell that a true pastor, these are supposed to be true leaders. There's a church on almost every corner, but yet y'all allowing a gay governor who does not have children to control the system over the children. This lady controls DHR and she's wicked as hell. Satan is using her to get to the children. And y'all don't even see it. And y'all supposed to be pastors. Y'all supposed to be seers. Y'all supposed to be watching the flock. And y'all can't even discern what's going on. Y'all can't even discern what's going on. <laughs> But God wants want y'all to know. Y'all better learn to confess of those sins. Y'all better learn to repent. And, and you don't have a lot of time to do it. He's coming. He's coming like a thief in the night. He is coming. He is on his way. And y'all still playing. Y'all still trying to cover your sins. When again, he already know it. He already seen it. He knew it before you did it. That's why he asked me, Keisha, do you trust me with your child? And I had to tell God, yes. I had to tell God, yes. But trust me when I say, everything y'all did for evil, it's about to turn out for my good. Just like Joseph's brothers had to come back to him, my brother and sister who participated in this wickedness, my brother and sister, yeah, I said it, who participated in this wickedness, my brother is so weak. He's so weak. He's so weak. And, and say he's a man of God. You're not a man of God, sir. You, did you tell everybody what you did? What you used to do before you started playing church? Did you not go and steal copper from churches? <laughs> How many times were you arrested? Like four times, Morris, Leon, Daniel. Four times for stealing copper from churches? But now you're holier than thou. You better check yourself. You better check yourself. Again, God said he warned y'all to repent of your sins. God saw the setup. <laughs> he saw the setup. He saw the setup. And that's why a lot of y'all about to suffer. I'm going to tell y'all this. Religion and religious people will get you killed if they can't kill you. They will. Jesus continuously blew the whistle 
on pious, organized religion. He went into the temple. He flipped the tables. He called out what they were doing, and they didn't like it. Y'all people who are out here doing wicked stuff, y'all do not care about Jesus. Pastors. All y'all care about is how can you profit? How can you gain a profit from doing your wickedness? How can you make money? How can you pay your power bill? How can you fund your church that is not built on Christ? That's what y'all care about. Y'all try to use people to prove a point, to prove that you got power. So what you do is you abuse and you use people. <laughs> but God gonna, God gonna make y'all pay. Y'all do know that, right? God is gonna make y'all pay. God is gonna make y'all pay. I gotta say that again. God is gonna make y'all pay. The price is going to cost some of y'all y'all lives. Better ask my cousin. I told her why she thought it was fun to sell my information, my um driver's license and social security card, all that stuff. She thought it was fun. She thought it was so funny to tell lies on me. She thought it was so funny. And like I told her, you better repent or God going to kill you. Not even two years later, God killed her. A lot of people, again, they don't like me because I'm bold enough to say what everybody else is afraid to say. But one thing I can promise you is that I'm not a lion prophet. Everything that I say comes to pass. I won Birmingham seven months ago, and everything is coming to pass. Okay. Jesus blew the whistle on truth. He blew the whistle on corruption, greed, and religion. The odds will always be against a whistleblower. Know that. Most of these people, let me let me show y'all some. Most of these people who came up against me, I have more education than them. <laughs> I have more degrees than them. My GPA when I pledged, aka was a 4.0. Most of these people, I tutored their children or their children was in my classroom. Ain't that some? But all of a sudden, because I walk in my anointing, I tell the truth like God tells me to. I'm a problem to your lies and your corruption. All of a sudden, I'm crazy. Far from crazy. Y'all saw that for yourself when y'all ordered me to take a psyche veil. That man said, I'm fine. Perfectly fine. Now what? Now what y'all gonna say? They they said Jesus was drunk. Everybody know Jesus wasn't drunk. Y'all will go to any measure to try and ruin somebody. To cover up your mess. But God knows. Trust me. God knows. <coughs> God knows. It was like the more complaints I filed against law enforcement, against judges, against attorneys, the more they came at me and tried to do me bodily harm. These people sent police officers to my home. These officers beat on my door and told me they were going to kick in my door and drag me out and beat me up in front of my baby. Y'all sent five women again to jump on me 
and not one of them touched the hair on my wig. Y'all think I'm worried about y'all. Andre Sparks, you sent people into the jail to drug me. I never took your drugs. <laughs> never. You can't touch me unless God allows it. Andre Sparks. <laughs> The more I went to file reports on the city magistrate, the more y'all allowed people to threaten to harm me and my child. <clears throat> Ain't that right, Arthur Patton Teal? Is it okay? I, I just want to know. Even if nothing happened, even if something did happen, is it okay? For a city magistrate to put someone in his personal vehicle while he's still on the city's time clock. Transport them to the jail. And transport them back. And when you report it, they say don't give her any reports for it. Instead, File a police report for her for trying to file a police report against him. That's how the, I'm telling y'all, that's how the system works. A magistrate, a city magistrate, ain't that right, Arthur Patton Teal, can come on your social media, harass you, hit love and like on your pictures, put you in his personal vehicle while still on the city clock, transport you. Fill you up. And no one says anything to him about it. This is the corruption. That is happening. Under the watch. Of. Pastor Judge. Andre Sparks. Mayor. Randall Wolfen. This man told me. That he has nothing to do with the city of Birmingham. We can tell. Because you don't do shit for the city of Birmingham. We can tell. It's personal with you. Ain't that right? Ain't that right, Mayor? One minute you're gay. Next minute you're straight. Next minute you're married. Got a baby on the way. Married a broker, buying up the city that you refuse to restore. <laughs> it's all your get rich quick scheme, right? Around the woofing. God is going to deal with you. The same things that make you laugh, <laughs> they're about to make you cry. You are about to feel. The pain and the misery that you've put so many people through. You are about to feel it. You are about to feel it. Arthur Pantil. Didn't you tell me to shut up? Before y'all locked me up for a long time. Ain't that what you told me? Shut up. About your corruption. Before you locked me up for a long time. And then come to find out when I was locked up from one of your co-workers who's in jail. <laughs> you like men too. Arthur Pantil. Am I right or wrong? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> the system values profits more than they do safety. Again, we have a gay mayor, Randall Wolfen. We have a gay governor. Gay Ivy, K Ivy, whatever. And y'all are putting so many children in harm's way because y'all refuse to do y'all job. The streets aren't safe. Wanna know why? Because of the demons 
that are in y'all that y'all are releasing. Satan don't care nothing about y'all rusty, crusty butts because y'all are employed by him. He's trying to get to the children. He's trying to get to the children. And y'all have opened up the gates of hell, allowing him to do it. So, you know, to the real mothers, to the real fathers, cover y'all children in the blood. Cover y'all children in the blood because your city leaders aren't doing it. Your pastors aren't doing it. Your pastors, again, sit at the same table and drink out of the same cups as these wicked people. We got to pray for our children. We got to cover our children. Because if we don't, Satan going to win. He gonna win. <laughs> to every person who thought it was a good idea to come up against me, your lies, your slanders, your accusations, accepting blood money for stealing my baby. <laughs> Look at Judas. The people who paid Judas, they already knew that Jesus was innocent. The people who paid you, Jamie, Daniel, Deborah Davis, they knew I was innocent. <coughs> they knew they had no charges against me that would stick. They knew that stealing my baby was the only thing that could hurt me. And they used the two closest people to me to do it. Y'all should feel some type of way in real life. Y'all should feel some type of way in real life. <laughs> Again, the people who paid knew that Judas was selling Jesus out. They knew Jesus was innocent. They just didn't like him. Just like y'all don't like me. But y'all got to get used to me. Y'all better get used to me. I'm about to be a household name. Y'all better get used to me. <laughs> when Judas went and he tried to return the blood money, what did these people do? They refused him. They refused him. They disowned him. God said he already disowned y'all. <laughs> and from what I understand, Kenosha already disowned y'all. I saw one of um, the girl's mothers who involved themselves um, with lying, destroying, trying to destroy my name and reputation. I saw her mama. She looked me in my face. She said, your God mama, Deborah Davis, Deborah Lincoln Davis Watts is wicked. She said, but do you not know all these people who came together and came against you ain't none of them friends. Ain't none of, don't none of them talk to each other no more. They all talking about each other. They all stealing from each other. They all hurting each other. <laughs> but God said that he will confuse the enemy. And when he does, he will destroy the enemy's camps. Don't y'all think that when the FBI goes in to talk to Kenosha and Andre Sparks, they gonna deny it and they gonna put everything off on y'all. Again, Andre Sparks works. He runs the municipal system. He runs the courts. He runs all the judges and attorneys in Birmingham. Don't you think that if he had to put false charges on y'all 
to clear his name, he going to do that. He's going to do that. But God been told me to go ahead and start declaring and speaking to the atmosphere. A lot of y'all deaths. A lot of y'all going to see prison time. And again, I, I'm not boasting in anything that I'm saying. I'm boasting in God. Because again, his word does not return void. If I speak it, you better believe it's going to happen. Because it didn't come from Keisha. It came from the source. If y'all are not careful, you will fall into hypocrisy and denial. Y'all hide behind righteous activities church. Oh, I'm a judge. Oh, I'm an attorney. Oh, I'm a police. <clears throat> Just because you hold a title, does that make you righteous? Y'all are the main ones who need to have psyche vows performed. Y'all are the main ones who go home, beat your wives, pop pills, drink alcohol, Y'all are the main ones with these evil thoughts. And a lot of y'all fulfill your evil thoughts. Y'all cover up killings, murders that y'all are sending people to go do. Because again, D.A. Danny Carr, just like Deborah Davis, Deborah Davis Lincoln Watts said, your mama is a big time drug dealer. Am I right, Danny Carr? DA Danny Carr? I ain't say it. Deborah said it. I'm just repeating it. <laughs> <clears throat> she ain't that's the reason that your brother was killed doing like a drug trade or something, Danny Carr? I ain't say it. Deborah Davis said it. I'm just repeating it. <laughs> Again, y'all, y'all use your titles. Y'all go to church every Sunday, putting on this performance to cover up your your um sin. Y'all do all these righteous activities, but God gonna make an example out of a lot of y'all. Instead of taking more inventory of your own lives, you rather destroy my life to try to make your life look okay. But people have a tendency of putting on a face for the public. I know for a fact that y'all don't like me. Y'all hate me. So that lets me know that y'all are harboring unforgiveness. And when you harbor unforgiveness, demons have legal right to torment you. So y'all are being tormented. Y'all are going to your jobs every day, abusing your titles and taking it out on the little people because you're mad at me. Y'all don't have a reason to be mad at me for telling the truth. Repent. Forgive. Turn back to Christ. That should be your first love. That should be who you should be focused on instead of calling around to my job, calling around to people who know me, threatening them, trying to find out where I'm at so y'all can come kill me, sending people to where I am to do harm to me, Birmingham Police, Jefferson County, Andre Sparks, <coughs> the same way Pilate handled Jesus he did him wrong. And he know he was wrong. That's the same way y'all mishandled me. Y'all mishandled Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Y'all mishandled Apostle Paul. True vindication is coming. Y'all can't hide it all 
<laughs> Y'all can't hide nothing from God. True vindication is coming. When God said he's going to destroy y'all, he meant that he's going to destroy y'all. I prophesy to Andre Sparks. I'm not going to do it. God going to do it. But you going to die. And it ain't got nothing to do with Keisha. It has everything to do with God. Everything to do with God. Just like God told me, I can trust him. I can trust God. I can trust him. God told me. He said they're going to they, they gonna sign. They're going to sign a lot of warrants and gag orders on you. He said, but let it sit there, daughter. Don't try to defend yourself. Don't try to defend yourself. I'm your defender. I'm Jehovah Gilboa. I fight for you. He said, whatever they do, whatever they say, do not defend yourself. Let it sit there. When they took Jesus to trial, Jesus did not defend himself. He did not open his mouth. Who do you say that I am? That's why I'm... I'm not trying to fight. <laughs> For what? I ain't got to. As long as I'm fighting with y'all, God going to sit up there on his throne and look down and do nothing. We got to get ourselves out of the way and allow God to fight for us. Just because you hold a title and a high position, that does not mean that God is not going to do anything to you. And again, like I said, y'all better repent. Repenting takes you back to God. You don't want to live a life separated from God, Andre Sparks. But you are, and you still run in a church. Just like Saul. He still operated as a king, but he had no anointing. No anointing. You're not anointed, Andre Sparks, to do what you're doing. Y'all better stop playing with God. Repent. Confess. But you can't confess if you're singing. Because that guess what? That makes Keisha right. Oh no, Keisha can't be right. I'm a judge. I'm a judge. I'm a pastor. Keisha can't be right. I'm right. Trust me. I'm right. Everything that I said that God has said so far, I'm right. Because I'm not just talking. Andre Sparks, repent. Confess of your sins. At this point, it is what it is. You already know I'm not going to do anything to you. God going to do it. <laughs> You're not repenting to me. You're not confessing anything to me. You're doing it to get your relationship back with God where it should be. Not for me. You know, I've already forgiven y'all. Only thing I got to do is keep telling the truth. Y'all are forgiven. There are no hard feelings. There are no hard feelings. I'd rather forgive than to live a life of torment every day, watching my back, not knowing when God is going to get me. All right? If you confess of your sins, Andre Sparks, I'm sure your wife going to forgive you for sleeping with Kenosha. I'm sure she going to forgive you. She been with you this long. She's going to forgive you. But you need to tell the truth. You need to start telling the truth and stop covering up the crimes that you're committing. 
You don't have to please Kenosha. Kenosha is man. You, The only thing you should be worried about is pleasing God. And right now, God is not pleased with you, Andre Sparks. I know you're afraid of losing your wife. You're afraid of losing your congregation. You're afraid of losing your job because you're sleeping with people you employ. Right? But God has a way of fixing everything. All you got to do is let him take control. You don't want to lose control. You know, I don't know. Sometimes God just be dropping stuff in, into me. You weren't, you weren't liked in school. You weren't most popular in school. So you felt like you had to do extra stuff to, to make your name known, right? You had to get all the degrees. You had to, um, you had to be a judge because no one respected you. And now if somebody disrespect you, you going to make them pay. You going to get them. You join Alpha Phi Alpha so that you can get accolades, <coughs> so that you can feel better about yourself because your low self-esteem got you messed up in your mind. And then you had a son who was strung out on drugs, who died on drugs. You couldn't save him. So you feel like a failure. You feel like a loser. But God is really calling you back to him. God is calling you back to him, Andre Spots. God is calling you into repentance. Before it's too late. Don't let Kenosha ruin you like she's ruined so many other men. She tried. She tried her best to ruin William Massey. She tried her best to ruin Officer Julian. But these men had a relationship with God. And, and that's what a Jezebel does. She tries to take down men in power. She tries to control and manipulate men in power. And, and you're allowing her to do it, Ahab. There is no way that that girl should be able to go into that system and continue to run my name and social security number without FBI clearance. Andre Sparks, who is giving her clearance? She's a records clerk. She doesn't run municipal court. She's a records clerk. So who's giving her clearance? Who's giving her FBI clearance? Is it you, Andre Sparks? Because you're afraid of her exposing you? Ain't no exposure like when God exposed you. Hmm. <laughs> Just like Pilate, Andre Sparks, you need Jesus too. I don't care about your titles. I don't care that you're a pastor. God doesn't care that you say you're a pastor. Are you watching his sheep? No, you're not. It's impossible, Andre Sparks, to please men. And I know you have so many people under you. Um, and I'm thankful for the people that are under you who are not afraid of you. There are so many people who work under you in your courtroom, in your court system. 
who know about your corruption, who calls me and tell me. One person, he was crying on the phone, begging me, Keisha, no matter what happens, do not come to this courthouse trying to get no paperwork, no information, no documents. Because the plans that Andre has for you are to kill you. This man called me crying, begging me not to come up there. He said, I don't care what happened. Do not come up here. Do not file any police reports. Because when, when they come out to file a police report, they're coming to arrest you. For no reason. They're going to arrest you. And think about it, Keisha. Who you going to call? Because they already scared away all your friends and family. He said, when they get you in that jail, they're going to try and kill you. So stay away from this courthouse. Stay out of Birmingham, he said. He said, you're going to have to sacrifice not seeing your baby. But stay the hell out of Birmingham. Because Andre Sparks wants you dead. This is your people, Andre. Well, they ain't your people. These are God's people. These are agents of God. Who ain't afraid of you, Andre Sparks? You doing the work of Satan. And it won't be long. It won't be long. Before God judges you. Judge Andre Sparks. Repent now. The kingdom is near. The kingdom is near. Y'all, I am done recording for tonight. Is a reason that God told me to record this. Because this ain't what I planned on recording. A lot of y'all have been abused by the system. God said he saw it. He heard it. And he's going to vindicate for you. The Holy Spirit saying exonerated. Exonerated. Hold on to that word. Whoever this is for, exonerated. Exonerated. Everything going to be wiped out. God got you. God got you. And he's about to make a believer out of the non-believers. He's about to make a believer. Um, I challenge y'all, whoever it is that's going through, you ain't even got to be going through. Worship God. Again, when you worship, it, it changes and shifts the atmosphere. Everything that has been held up, delayed, denied, is coming. <coughs> the more you worship him, the higher you worship him. I'm, I promise y'all it's coming. When I tell y'all, because I've gone to a new level in my worship. It started since 7 o'clock this morning. Everything, everything free. I ain't paid for nothing today. Free. Some stuff is being released back to me right now. Starting with my baby. Being released. It ain't nothing. 
a man can do to stop what God is about to do. Just worship God. Y'all trust God and stop being afraid of these people. What 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 in the hell can people do to you? Nothing. After killing the body, what more can man do to you? Nothing. They don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Only God has that power. So why are we afraid of men? If we die, we can only go to heaven or hell. I would rather die and go to heaven than to be stuck here on this ghetto earth with these ghetto people who are afraid of men. But anyway, that's my live for tonight, y'all. I will be back um, this Wednesday. I think God is going to allow me to teach the other word. But this right here had to be said, and it had to be said tonight. Because, again, it's 1030. I supposed to be in here earlier recording. I was going to come on in and go to sleep. God said, no, record. Andre Sparks, I love you, Pastor Andre Sparks. I'm praying that you do the right thing and that you get set free. Because that has to be a lot on you. Anyway, y'all, good night. <clears throat>